Welcome back to Bleach Anime Review Part 3. This one reviewing Season 6 and 7. The first two parts of the Roncar arc. Yeah, the Roncars are simply put, um, Hollows with soul Reaper powers. That's simply the point of them. The season, season 6 starts off with the Grand Fisher, the Hollow who killed Ichigo's mother, just showing up, and of course he becomes the Roncar, and of course he gets taken out not by Ichigo, but by... Um, his father, who it turns out is a Soul Reaper. Yeah, and one of two times he actually puts on a Soul Reaper attire, which I'm thinking, so, the whole goofiness that has been displayed in the whole show is basically an act. And also, uh, Tautsky, it's also shown Tautsky basically can see his substitute Soul Reaper badge, which I'm like, I get the reason why she can, because she's got spiritual powers. She's like one of like two I can think of, of his friends, basically, who does have them. Though, one of them later on revealed, basically, just watched an episode where they got spiritual powers. Yeah. Uh, so, simply put, the Iran cards is like, okay, so let's just have it where, um, because of the whole, so... And then after that, after that, after that Grand Fisher thing is taken care of, uh, oh yeah, and apparently Ichigo's father, Aizen, I think his name is, he apparently knows that Kone basically has been running around in Ichigo's body whenever Ichigo is off killing Hollows. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Fine. Don't have a problem with that at all, because he's a mod soul, so he can do whatever the heck he wants. Uh, it's also nice to see, uh, the, the, the mod souls that were modified to detect bounce, which they're just there just to say, hi, we're here. Yeah, they, 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 they show up now and again. They, they can either appear in their geekai form or their uh, stuffed animal form. It's whatever the animators wanted to do with them. Half the time, they're just there just for being just reoccurring characters. And, and, and with the exception of the opening part of this season six, they don't do very much. They just talk and just do jack squat. But they're always nice to see these characters, so it's pretty fun to see them. Um, I should also point out the Roncar arc. Uh, it's where the comedy really goes to the roof. It just goes so funny. Oh, there's one thing I forgot to mention when it comes to the Bount arc. Um, when, during the Season 5, when, when they were in the Soul Society, when uh, Ruki was protecting a little girl from Yoshi, the other female uh, Bount, she had her hand on top of her head, and she has her basically, and she just, at this point, she doesn't have her Zapak toe, her, her sword. So, uh, she has, she has someone else's sword. She has it tossed aside. And then Yoshi does something quite unusual. She basically puts her sword, not like stabbing Rukia, basically trying, it almost looked like she was trying to open up her robe in a, on a public street. And she says, you monster. <laughs> I'm like, Really? You calling this woman a monster, this I think she kind of is, for trying to open up your robe on a public street. Okay. Fine. But anyways, back to uh, uh, this. So, the thing is a little more serious when two Iran cars show up in the middle of a park. Completely out of no... Well, they just pop out and just crash land like a meteorite. No one can actually see them except for T Totsi, who, who, who actually... You have, you have Orihama, I think I say pronounce it. He's voiced by Tony Oliver, who um, is known for the voicing characters on Naruto. And, of course, you also the character Yami, who is Arankar number 10. Uh, your son is Arankar number 4. And he's kind of an interesting character. He's got a good look to him. He's got, like, this teary eye look, green eyes. And he spends a lot of this time, he basically has part of his coat open, which throws off his hole in his chest, because he's a hollow hollow. And he has his hand in his pockets a lot of the time. And Ichigo, basically, because at this point, his hollow powers, basically, are on the fritz. So, he's very hesitant. I mean, for, for, first, it's uh, Chad or Hime taking him on. They, they get knocked. First, Chad gets seriously injured. And... And he, uh... And his arm gets injured, and... And of course, um, and then of course, when when 
when Ichigo shows up, it's like, everybody just stand back. I'll take care of this. Even though he doesn't do to it. He doesn't okay job. He, he chops up Yami's arm. Yeah, he chops off his arm. And, and of course, after battling him for a while, he, he suffer, go, goes through a depression. Which, uh, it takes a group of Soul Reapers, people he knows from the Soul Society, to come and basically get him out of it. Who does Soul Society send? Rukia, Renji, um, R R Rongju, the, uh, woman basically who, um, likes to, use, uh, show it off her Cleveland a lot. Uh, Ikaku, Yamachu, and Captain, <laughs> and, and Totsu, the, um, the, um, the captain who looks like a little kid. Yeah. So, he's like... He's like, Renji? Toshiro? He's like, it's Captain... It's, it's like he first... He first everybody... Like, exception of his lieutenant. It seems like uh, almost everybody, everybody who's not part of... Who's not a captain or his lieutenant has to call him Captain... Her, 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 I, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. And, and they managed to... And they're all like walking through Ichigo's school in Geekai form wearing school uniforms. And like, this is so uncomfortable. And, and they're all telling Reggie, like, um, you've been here before. He says, yeah. You remember what his classroom is? And they just happened to find his classroom. And Ichigo was in there cleaning the chalkboard. And then, like, he's all surprised as he turns around. And then Rukia just happens to be in the window. So he basically. Um, so they take him out of his body, and, <laughs> and everybody's, like, walking in, it's like, and, um, what, when he goes, friends, um, Kano, I think it's the guy, the guy loves running away from stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like he, whenever he sees Ryoku, basically, he wants to seduce her because, well, he has things for older women. Though she basically rightfully punches him and steps on him. Though I wouldn't have been surprised if later on she basically develops an attraction to him. I would not have been surprised about that. But it's just so hilarious. Like, oh look, a little kid who looks like a burglar. Uh, a baldy. A bald guy. A pretty boy. It's like they're all intimidated by... Oh, and the first person that they say something that they say something about is Renji. Because he's the one holding Ichigo. It's just so funny. It is by far one of the most hilarious scenes anybody can see in the show. And of course they they they, they get him out. Ruka gets on his funk first by well taking out a hollow, and then he goes to apologize to and he basically she basically drags him to Orihime to apologize for her for, for failing to protect her. He says, "Yeah, I'll protect you now," and she's like, "Okay, fine." She forgives him. Yeah. And of course he also runs into a Vizard. Yeah. And it turns out all these Vizards, it's later explained, uh, they're all former Soul Reaper cap. Like, there's a few of them are Soul Reaper captains or lieutenants. Uh, one was actually a lieutenant of the uh, Keto Corps. Yeah. So they, they showed them off and they did some training. Um, or he made his battle with Yami basically destroyed her, um, one, one, of her one of her harpies, which that does attacks. So, because the fact, they figure out what exactly I, I was, was up to, apparently he wants to create this, this gigantic key to get inside the soul, the soul king's palace and kill him. He needs two things, like some kind of special object. Uh, it's called the Oaken key, it's called. And he wants this particular, he, uh, he also wants to destroy, uh, Kodahoku town. Which is a town that looks like it has a population of thousands. So he wants to kill... Okay, it's actually 100,000 souls and destroying this one area. That's what he wants to do. And it's later shown exactly uh, how the Soviet managed to prevent that from happening. But yeah. And because the fact it'll take a while for the Hoku to, to basically show... To actually do anything... Uh, they decided this, uh, the Soul Reapers who were there just to 
well, get Ichigo up to speed um, about the Ron Carr stuff, uh, they decide to simply just stay around. Rukia, of course, is going to stay with Ichigo. Uh, Roku go stays with Orihime. Uh, Ikaku and Yamachen go stay with uh, one of Ichigo's friends. Um, and Renji goes to stay at or Orihama's shop, which uh, the two little kids there call him Moocher. <laughs> Though, uh, Rugi basically, how she tries to convince him that she wants to stay, first she tries to unbutton her top, she's like, don't do that, don't do that, and then she tries to lift up her skirt to try to seduce him, it is so hilarious, and he's doing this, <laughs> it's like, I don't want to say that, <laughs> it is so funny. And sh she's actually the second woman actually to tempt him on the show, first was... Yurishi, basically, which she, she does it again later on, which, which I'll get to that, but it is so hilarious. The fact that um, a lieutenant of the Soul Reaper, uh, a lieutenant of the Third Guard Squad, wants to use a substitute Soul Reaper to, to, just, to, just to get her, him to, well, to stay with him. Thus so she goes to Orihime's, and she's like, okay, can I stay with you? She's like, Okay, and of course she's seen with a broken arm because she got injured during the first wrong, ma ma major wrong car attack. So stays with her, and so she decides to have a meal, have a bath, and she talks to her, and then all of a sudden for some reason, I have no idea why she decides to, she decides to get out of a bathtub, come out of the bathroom, butt ass naked, and come out right on top of Orihime, and she decides to tickle her to get her out of her, her, her little depression. And of course, decides to also have her bury her face in her breast. I am not kidding. This is exactly what happens. It is so weird and bizarre. Like, okay, you have Rukyu, this fully grown woman, staying with a teenager, and she's talking to her butt ass naked. Heck, she's even on top of her at one point. I'm like, are they gonna make out or something? It is just really bizarre to see this happen. But. You have Ikaku and Yamachi basically just, well, before they go, me stay with one of Ichigo's friends. It's not Chad, it's, um, Mizumi, I think it's called, his name is? I think so, I'm not really sure. He, um, just, they, they just stay around, they fight some Iran cars, and one, one Iran car they fight just happened to run into Mizumi, basically, who's out just getting a drink from a vending machine. Yeah, sent by his sister, nonetheless. Excuse me. So he's so Ikaku is like, I'll make a deal with you. Uh, I'll protect you from him if he allow us to stay with you for 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 um for for a few months. He's like, okay, fine, go ahead, do it. <laughs> yeah, and of course they take out the Iran car, no problem. And of course, also later on during the this is actually during. This is actually one of three Iran car attacks that happens over the course of season six and seven. This is actually the second. This is actually, if I remember correctly, I think this is the second one, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there's also one where Green Job basically attacks the the World Eleven with, with, with his own Iran cars, which, as far as I know, all of them die. They they all get killed by the Soul Reapers, uh, except for Green Job himself, who gets ostracized by Totsu, the one of the two guys who defected with on. Ozma. And how does he punish him? By chopping off his arm and burning it. Not kidding. That's really his punishment. And it's just so really weird. Uh, basically, the way they ended season six and started off season seven was a series of eight filler episodes. First, with a four part focus on Roku protecting a little boy, uh, a spirit of a little boy, uh, from Hollows. Interesting four-parter. Then the season starts off with Toshu basically working with Kyrene, uh, helping out with a soccer game. Okay, fine. It's a pretty decent episode. And of course, uh, when she figures, when, when he, when, when he, when she sees him, when he notices that she sees him in a soul uniform, she's actually, he's actually a bit surprised that he actually, she actually could do that. And then of course, she meets up with with Ryoku, and. And, and they sort of introduce it, yeah, uh, like, who is it? This is Carrie. she's uh, Ichigo's sister. It's like, okay, that kind of does make sense. Because she, she because she's got spiritual awareness. And she's got a very powerful kick. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, this one focused on Ikaku, who trains a group of uh, trains a fencing team for a friendly competition. Uh, this one focused on Yamachin, who uh, works with uh, the medic that uh, Ichigo met back in season three, I believe it was. Yeah, the one who helped him try to free. Actually, it was back in season two. Yeah, first time in a little while that I've actually seen him. Yeah, he's like the medic and, and some guy from uh, Squad 12. Who uh, so Some scientist from Squad 12. And they go and just uh, just check out the area where the where the first wrong card attack was. Which, okay, I'm seeing this and I'm like, okay, the wrong card attack at this point has only been about, what? The, it's only been a couple months since the the first actual wrong car attack, and there's still a giant hole in this park. I'm like, couldn't they just fill it up by now? I guess not. This is something that really scratched my head. Of like, why are they taking so long to take care of this dang hole? It's really head scratching. I like the fact the filler episodes do kind of basically reference stuff and regular uh, canon stuff. But come on, couldn't the, couldn't the city actually try to fill up that dang hole by now? But nope, it's still exactly the same from when Yami and, and Ruchin, I think that's how you pronounce the guy's name. Yeah, he's the wrong kind of number four, the guy with the teary eye thing. So, it's been a month since that, and the hole was still not filled up. And what they tried, now he's, now he's, Yamachin's basically there, it's just, well, just the guy to help out. You also get a chance to see uh, the medic basically, um, Amanda, I think his name is, uh, uses Zanpakuto. Basically, it transforms into a scalpel and he uses to take a, a Mundus Ground and basically this gigantic hollow. Um, basically, slicing him up, basically, leaving for Yamachin for an opening to take him off fully. And, and get this the whole point of this episode is to have this chef prepare a cake for his mother. Because she, he wanted her. To try one of his cakes. That was really the whole point of this episode. Yeah. It's a nice little episode. It's an evil one focused on Cone. Which is a really bizarre. Which is a really interesting one with him basically taking the body. Taking taking over uh, a, a, a much bigger stuffed bear. And protecting her from a two headed um, uh, dog hollow. Which was really nice. And of course Roku shows up beginning of the episode. But it, it's a nice little fun one. Excuse me. And then when they have it where um, Orihime gets kidnapped by the wrong cars, of course a bunch of other wrong cars you know as a distraction. And then when she gets captured, everybody gets everybody withdraws, and she is basically given she's basically sort of blackmailed to go with them, uh, either come with us or we'll kill your friends. Yeah. So you and then she he gives her a bracelet and says you can say you have 12 hours. To me, the rhyme point, you hit, yeah, and you can say goodbye to one friend and one friend only. And who is she saying goodbye to? Ichigo. Which she confesses that she's in love with him while he's sleeping. And holding his hand, too. And that kind of leads to um, basically the story of his abandoning Ichigo and him going to Wake Muda by himself with uh, Chad and Uru. But uh, prior to this, basically, like, Ichigo is being cold because, well, Orihime disappeared. So, Tatsu basically notices that that, he, that Orihime has gone missing. So she goes, pressures Ichigo for information. And she does something, really something that's completely strange. And causes the whole hallway to get shocked. When, when, when she punches Ichigo so hard, his head goes through a window. And I'm surprised, though, his head didn't get cut by that. I'm like... You punch him so hard that he goes through a window, that he nearly falls out a window, and I, I'm looking at the back of his head. I'm like, isn't he bleeding uh, from from doing that? Um, I don't know how somebody basically can go head first through a window, basically back of the head, and not have glass shards at the back of his head, or at least have his head bleeding. How the heck can he survive that? And of course, him being cold, and him decided to um, tell her to stay away from. Him. Though they, of course, decided to follow him to a horror shop, and basically they decided to just, well, they sort of see him basically go off to Wake Muna with Chad Uru, 
which Uru basically throughout this whole time basically was getting back his Quincy powers from his father, who was also a Quincy, even though that he never wanted to be a Quincy. Yep, he got his powers back. It was nice the fact that he got his powers back. And he got like a Quincy cross bracelet thing he puts around he has he where he has around his uh his wrist. And basically he has a much larger bow. And he also also decided to this but it's a bit revealed later on, he basically raided a storeroom for these um blades. And the way he says it, it's like he's speaking with a German accent. Yeah, and apparently these things are the only bladed weapons the Quincy's actually use because they're just archers. Um, the way he says it, it's like, um, it's like he's speaking with a German accent. So, basically, it's implying that the Quincy's have their origins in Germany, just like the Bounce do. Okay, fine. Don't have a really big problem with that. I mean, you gotta at least have somebody, some place for the, for the Quincy's to come from. And... Once you get the wake of Mundo, it's like it's it's like the show becomes much more hilarious. Like, okay, let let's have them go up in a tornado, and then they get out of the tornado, and then they land on the ground, and then a bunch of sand falls on them. And of course, they run into three comic relief characters. Um, uh, one of course is a little girl named Nell, who basically follows around each of you. Basically, first up a tag, and then of course she has to continue following him around even after the whole group splits up. And of course. While they're there, like, okay, they're, they're about to get to, what? Uh, they're trying to get to um, La Los Noches. And about halfway there, and Reggie and Rukia show up. And because they didn't trust, because because it's implied Rukia, uh, Ikyo didn't trust them enough, basically, that they would know they are going to follow them. So they both, tag, they both tag team and punch Ichigo for not trusting them. That kind of does make sense, because Ichigo's an idiot. And they get to Whit Wick and Mundo. They, they get to Lost Note just inside to split up, going on separate corridors. Uh, Nell decides to follow Ichigo. Uh, Porta, uh, Poto decides to follow Uru. And the big guy, um, I don't remember his name. He decides to follow Renji for some reason. Of course, the other guy <laughs> decides to follow Uru. Uh, and they, they all had their own separate battles with, with uh, and of course, Re Renji does not battle with one of the, um, um, one of the fallen run cars is just uh, Ichigo, Chad, and Uru fight Iran cars, and also uh, the one Uru fights is a fe is a woman. I'm not kidding, which makes this what the second female villain he's actually had to fight, and it, and it takes several episodes for him to win. And of course, <laughs> I thought this was so funny the fact that the other guy who was following him basically he's like so close he can look up her skirt and see her panties. <laughs> It's, it's, she, she's like, you can see my panties? <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Though we never got a chance to see the panties because, well, it's a family show. They wouldn't show that. But it's just so hilarious. Yeah, these guys are just so funny at what they do. And, of course, they all, they all beat them. And then they all move on. And, of course, later on, uh, I believe in season eight this is, when... um. Uru and Renji basically meet up with each other. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember, am, am I forgetting anything? I'm trying to remember though. From season six, I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember if I'm forgetting anything from these two seasons. Let's see. Oh, um, Rukia. Well, uh, that's a build off for the next season, but yeah. But I don't think I forget anything. No. I don't think I have. I think I got pretty much mostly, uh, everything I could think of when it comes to these particular two seasons. But next part, seasons eight and nine. And things really heat up when it comes to seasons eight and well, mo mostly season eight. Nine is a filler season, which I'll talk about exactly my opinion about it. Yeah. So that's it for this part. Stay tuned for part
uh, five for seasons eight and nine. Okay, until then, I will see you there. Bye.